Our guest today is Chris Tucker, owner of Right Now Communications, based in Southern California. It's a search engine optimization service, and he'll be explaining what that's all about. Thanks for joining us, Chris. You bet. Thanks for having me on today. Well, for the sake of brevity here, let's go ahead and refer to search engine optimization by its industry shorthand initials, SEO. That stands for search engine optimization. Chris, just what is SEO and why is it important to online marketing? Well, SEO is uh, a track of skills that um, helps a website be found. And what's happened is the Internet has put the power into people's hands, the consumer's hands, while traditional media marketing has always pushed the messaging at people. The Internet really asks people to pull it from them. So most online sessions include querying a search engine. And that event is the marketer's opportunity to be present on the search result. Without applying SEO to a site, it won't be present for the search result. So it's, it's a very important aspect of having a website today. Mm-hmm. And kind of a new twist on the old saying that if you build it, they, uh, they will come. But really, if they can't find you, they're not going to come at all, are they? Exactly. So you better build it right. Well, so who needs SEO and what sorts of companies uh, are you working with? Are they large companies, small companies? Well, we deal with all sizes. Um, We have a lot of uh, state associations, um, visitor centers for states and things like that. And then we have a lot of mom-pa businesses for sure. Um, A lot of our business has sprung out of my past life, which was marketing in the hospitality industry. And so that kind of gave us an ability to leverage ourselves into the um, search engine optimization business. But Basically, unless a website is designed just to be shown when someone is asked about it, in other words, if if a business owner was asked, do you have a website, and he gave somebody an address, that would send somebody to that website. Um, but if that's all you ever do with your website, then that's all you ever have to do. But as we know, what we're really trying to do with websites is get our message out to new people, people who've never heard of us. So in that aspect, everybody needs SEO. Mm -hmm. Um, Because really, if you don't optimize your site for search engines, how is anybody going to find you out there? It's really quite a revolution in the marketing model, isn't it? Where now, just for the cost of getting a host, which quite often is free, and putting up some creative content and and getting yourself well-placed in a search engine, the small guy uh, is on equal footing with with the big guys, aren't they? Uh, To some degree, absolutely. I mean, for a 100 years, marketing and advertising was about shouting about who we were um, and hoping that people would take notice of us. And now um, we basically sit in a library uh, waiting for someone to find us. Mm-hmm. So very, very different methods. So you can succeed simply by being clever these days. <laughs> very much so. Well, and there still is room for for people with great ideas and not a pocket full of cash, for sure. Well, what are some of the general principles of SEO? Where does it all start? Well, in one word, Stephen, it's definitely relevance. All items on your page have to be congruent with each other. And this is a lot of what people miss because it's so simple. And what I try to have people understand is a search engine is just a a computer application, if you will. All it sees is pluses and minuses. And so it has to be able to add something up from all of that and come up with an answer. So you have to give them the answers. Who are you? What do you do? Why do you do it? When do you do it? And where do you do it? If you don't answer those age-old questions of marketing, then there's no way for the search engines really to be able to compile that information and index you correctly into their collection of literally hundreds of millions of websites. Well, and they're pretty clever uh, at that, aren't they? I know they have certain algorithms that these search engines use, and quite often they're top secret, the Google algorithm. And sometimes it seems that people are focusing on trying to chase the algorithm rather than simply starting with the fundamentals that you talk about is who are you targeting and and what value, what content are you going to provide? Well, you've got that right. If you're an expert on, say, flying pigs, but your site talks about the birds and the bees, you'll fall short of your goals, to be sure. I want to quickly do a Google search on flying pigs. I imagine there's probably a website out there (laughs) specializing in that. (laughs) How about some of the specific fundamental steps that you take when you're providing your, your search optimization service? What are three or four fundamental steps that you offer? Well, given the opportunity to get involved with a client early on in their process of of either creating or redesigning a website, 
Um, there's a lot of things we can do before even uh, one piece of code has been written. It's, it's so important, especially these days, that a site be built what we call search engine friendly. And what I mean when I say search engine friendly is that a computer application such as a search engine is able to do some things, but it's not able to do other things. So if you build a website that makes it hard for the search engine to traverse across all of your pages and your navigation and your links, then it's not going to find all of your information. Mm -hmm. So we get in right at the beginning with the web designers and make sure that the site is being ser built search engine friendly. For example, fr using frames might ne not necessarily be a friendly thing to do. Absolutely. Frames, uh, overuse of Flash, uh, there's, there's a number of pitfalls to be sure. Um, there's literally dozens of types of code that will display a web page but not all of them uh, will will allow a search engine to read it. So while these great bells and whistles might be good for holding somebody once they get there, but isn't necessarily going to work to uh, attract them in the first place. Exactly. I mean, if we're not on the first page of Google for what it is we're, we're offering, our chances of being found at least through search are slim to none. Yeah, I, I've heard quite often in studies you may get millions of returns, but if you're not in the top 10 or the tw top 20, you might as well not even be there. Or what if you optimize yourself for something you think would bring you a lot of traffic, but it's completely irrelevant, and you find yourself um, getting a thousand visitors a day who have no interest in what it is you offer? And <laughs> people do that more often than you would believe. Um, after after we have a, a search engine friendly site design, um, the most important thing that can be done on the page on each page of the website is make sure that uh, correct titles and meta descriptions are used that match the content of the site. Um, it has to be targeted at specific search phrases that have been proven through research that you've done uh, to be the way that people actually search for what it is you offer. We can't just assume we know how people search. We have to go out and do the research as to how they actually perform the searches that they do that bring up the websites that they're looking for. Now, meta tags may sound like a fairly complicated concept to people who aren't used to actually web design, web development, but it seems to me it's one of the simplest things to do for most effective return on your efforts uh, with search engines. It's very simple, very obvious. There are a few rules, and most people completely forget about it by the time they get to that part of their web design. They've spent so much time and effort coming up with good graphics and writing whatever their their information is, um, the simplest things get missed. And that's where the opportunity lies for people who are paying attention, for sure. Which is all for naught if it's not optimized for the search engine. Well, engines. and, you know, finally, um, an interesting thing ab about websites is they're never finished. So, <laughs> you know, the, the final of three fundamentals that, that I list for people is that always be considering that you have never-ending improvement and growth of what was originally unique content that you wrote. In other words, don't go and steal a bunch of content from someone else and, and expect to do very well for the search, especially if you never go on to go back to that page and, and work it over uh, even more. Um, so you want to think of yourself as being a contributor to the web and not just adding more noise to all of that that's out there. It's a never-ending process, that's for sure, as the Internet itself. And can you think of any industry that you have ever seen that is, has revolutionized the marketplace so quickly is the Internet. Just look at what's happened in just the last decade. Absolutely. And, you know, I, I would bet that uh, people from the 30s would say that direct mail certainly changed things, and it did back then. Um, this is nothing more and nothing less than that. Uh, it just has the, the ability to reach people is, is like nothing ever before. What What is a job like for an SEO specialist? Does it give you flexible time with your online work? Does it give you free time for some of the other projects that you might be working on? Oh, absolutely. But I, I caution people that if you don't enjoy the work that you do, um, this will be drudgery like nothing else. Um, <laughs> it's a very specialized I, I set of like skills. I like research <laughs> and I like competing. And so those two things are, are what I spend the majority of my time doing. Uh, the writing of titles and descriptions and tweaking people's content so it's congruent with that um, is the easy part. 